Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, so glad you could be here today. Have you considered ever investing in a property and been a little scared about what that's gonna look like, especially now? Well, today we have Debbie Treminsky with us, uh, who is an Austin Realtor and an author, who's gonna talk to us a little bit about how the market's doing with uh, COVID-19 out in Texas, as well as what it takes to be an investor. So thank you so much for joining us today, Debbie. Thank you. Hey, hey. no, this is really exciting. I'm, I'm glad to be um, here talking to you guys and Facebook Live. It's fun, I'm really getting into the Zoom stuff myself. So. Um, yeah, so a little bit about me. So uh, my name is Debbie Treminsky. I'm a realtor in Austin, Texas. I've been doing real estate here for 17 years. And uh, I've been helping clients and working by referral the entire time I've been in real estate. And kind of as a side project, um, I, I started with the house my husband and I bought a little bungalow, $115,000 piece of property when we were newlyweds. And we've used the equity in that original house to turn it into a portfolio of 11 homes uh, with a combined asset value of more than $3.4 million. And we've been able to do that by using the equity in our homes and, and extracting it and reinvesting it in such a way that we have this portfolio and we never had to rate our savings accounts or get you know my big pay increases or anything to be able to make this happen. The, the houses basically had babies, if you wanna say, and, and bought the next houses for us. Um, and so, the whole time I've been practicing real estate and helping my clients, I also started helping my clients do the same thing because I kind of casually mentioned, oh, I've got a rental property down the street here, whatever. And they'd be like, what? Tell me more. And so I was a little slow on the uptake and I was like, wait, maybe I should formally be telling my clients about this and teaching them the, the, the methodology. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I caught hold and I've been teaching my clients for several years now in a more um, intentional, formal way of how to do this. And I've shown people how to pull equity out of the homes they, they own and, and, and reinvest. And it doesn't, you know, I've shown them how it doesn't affect their monthly cash flow um, and how they don't have to get raid their savings accounts and how it's a, it's a magical bypass um, using the methodology that's in my book. But it's a magical bypass to having to, um, instead of having to accumulate millions of dollars in a 401k or IRA, having these properties, if you, um, figure out a way to really follow my path to leveraging them during retirement, you can retire tax-free and have a pretty, pretty lucrative retirement every year. Uh, so basically with all that, I was getting so excited telling my clients and explaining it over and over. I was one day, I'm like, I'll write a book about it. And so that's what I did. Um, and uh, I wanted to make it fun because I've said, read some real estate books that are just like, put me to sleep and make me want to cry. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just, since it's my book and I'm not getting it, like there's no English teacher grading it, I'm going to write it how I want. And so I did it. It's a quick read. It's like less than 50 pages, I think. And it's got like charts and stuff to help. So it's got pictures. Um, and uh, so I named it Rich Slow is my homeboy, real estate investing redefined. And I named it that because try to grab you and let you know it's, it's a little bit different than uh, your typical real estate investing book. It's a quick and fun read. I've been told by, by my fans. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> by, by, by yeah, my reader. In good read. I read it in a few hours. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, really and, uh, pretty quickly. and it, it was it was actually hilarious. And I've read a lot of business books. I've read, read a lot of real estate books. I've read a lot of investing books. And you're right, most of the time, they're pretty dry um, and very technical. And though yours had all of those elements where it had the information you needed, the technical aspect of it, it was fun. It was entertaining. So like I enjoyed each paragraph through the read. Just so. laugh out loud funny. It was laugh out loud funny. So you guys <laughs> have to pick it up. Uh, the link will be in the description box below. So definitely check it out. Cool. Um, and so, yeah, so there's, there, there's been that going on, you know, in the meantime, I've had two kids, you know, since I started real estate and mm -hmm. basically the investing has been very hands-off and low maintenance. And that's why, um, that's why I've been able to do it. Um, and that's why when I show my clients, they're like, oh, I can do this too. When I show them how easy it is because mm -hmm. everybody, everybody, because I, maybe it's HGTV, we have to thank, thank for this, but everybody's in, interested in real estate and talk about real estate investing. They're like, tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, sure, I'd love to. And I explain how easy it is and how I'm doing it and how I can guide them through. They're like, 
yeah, right on. Let's, let's go and do this. So it's been really fun. And the cool thing is a lot of my clients, um, you know, I helped them buy their first house whenever that was way back when. And people the, in Austin I think on average, they move every eight years. Um, I think nationally it's every 13.3 years. So, you know, that's what the difference calls like every 10 years, people are moving. I've been able to be more a uh, stronger, more relevant, valuable presence in my clients' lives um, in between because they're, I also am their, their investing advisor. So I get to do more transactions with them instead of just like the, the move every eight to 10 years, whatever it is. And then uh, lo and behold, almost every time too, like clockwork, if a client is investing, they, they talk about it at work because, you know, I think they feel fancy about it. Yeah. Um, and then one of their coworkers calls me and wants to get in it too. So like the referral um, conversion ratio has just been like phenomenal too. Um, so, and, and they love me for it. It's really cool. Well, you're adding value to their lives and helping them to learn how to build wealth. That's, it's a really, you know, it's a, you're changing lives. That's awesome. Have you helped any other realtors um, teach their clients how to become investors? Yes, I've actually, I've been working on that. I've presented um, in front of a few groups of realtors and they all seem to really glom onto it. They, they even like, I like, I do like a quick little one hour sort of intro course to it. And like they just, they get tics, tips and techniques they can take to their clients straight away from there. And based on that in the book, I actually am wrapping up recording. I'm starting a training program for realtors mm -hmm. to show them how easy it is to teach it to their clients. Um, because they can have the same success as me, but so much more compressed. Because, you know, I said I was kind of slow on the uptake um, in terms of like kind of formally rolling it out to, to my sphere of influence and my clients and my database. Um, but if, they, they, if other people can hit the ground running um, with the training I can offer them, they're just gonna, you know, see immediate results is, is what I anticipate. Um, and I like to tell people is that you don't have to start, you don't have to be an investor yourself to teach this either um, by any means. Um, I mean, it's been my experience. When I first got my real estate license, people thought I knew everything about real estate. They thought I was like the MLS walking around on two legs. Um, <laughs> and so, um, and people are like that. They just think, oh, you must know everything about real estate. Do you know about that house like 25 miles away with the flagpole? <laughs> I'm like, um, no, but I can look it up. But anyway, so the point is that um, like pe if people know you like you and trust you and know you're in real estate, they're going to let you lead them through it, even if you haven't bought one yourself yet. Um, so it's a great way to um, like just rocket, add rocket fuel to your business. If you're a brand new agent, just to show up and be like, Hey, I'm a specialist at investing. Or if you're more seasoned, you know, it's a great way to circle back your database and, and, um, discover all sorts of new transactions that are just waiting to happen. So yeah. that's really amazing advice. Now, um, with, with, so you, do you use a management company for your um, rentals or do you manage them yourself? I have a management company. One of them, I still manage myself. I bought it like in 2013, 2014. I don't remember. It came with a tenant and she won't leave. Um, that's great. It's great. Yeah. a wonderful <laughs> problem to have. Um, yeah, that's an awesome problem. In fact, it's not a problem. Um, and so I just manage that because it's easy and I know her, but everybody else, I do have a management company. And so um, like most days, I don't think about my rentals. It's, it's a rare thing that they kind of take, um, the, the center stage of my life. Um, cause the, the manager takes care of everything, you know, did and like, um, management company, or did you at one point manage them yourself? I did. And then I, I kind of was like, oh, I, I need to kind of just stop doing this. And a lot of it was just because, um, I was dropping the ball on like renewing on time and I wasn't increasing the, the rent enough. Um, and also I was kind of like a softie when people would make weird, weird requests, I'd have a hard time saying no. So I needed to pay, to pay somebody else to, to have, you know, the, uh, trying to look the nerve, I guess, trying to think of a nice way to say, it. yeah, <laughs> to enforce the rules. Um, and also just the anonymity sake, they don't really need to know who I am or where I live. So like, they have no idea who I am, which is nice. And I think that that keeps a lot of like people away from investing is like the fear of the toilet, right? The, that leaky toilet at 2 a.m., uh -huh. uh, which really never happens. But knowing that you can, you can leverage a management company to take care of that for you, whether it's one property or a hundred properties, uh, really just like takes a lot of, a lot off your plate. Um, so mm -hmm. that's something to consider what, or something to talk about with, you know, the average uh, person who's interested in investing. 
Yeah. And I coach my clients all the time through it because I have some that choose to do the, the self-management and I, I've, I've had the experience and I can, you know, they can lean on me as a resource if they need help. And I don't mind that at all. So yeah, I've seen all the angles of it, but I, I prefer to just let somebody else management. To me, it's money well spent. Um, I, yeah. Hey, Debbie, for the new investor out there, what are like a few tips that you could give them if somebody's interested in investing. I know right now interest rates are really low. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of our clients that are pulling money out. So if they wanted to use that to purchase an investment property, what would be you know three or five tips that you could give them moving forward? Um, I would recommend um, getting good help, especially if you're not a realtor yourself, um, get a good realtor who, who can take really good care of you. Yep. Um, <laughs> like Miss Diana over here. So, so find somebody who can, you can trust to help you through the process. Um, you know, find your location. Like I, I love investing in Austin because it offers so much. It's, it, it just happens to me in my backyard. So it's just like this amazing confluence of awesomeness. Um, but I like Austin. Too. The reason I like Austin, which is why I like, I wrote the book is that we're an appreciation city, which California is the same thing, but you know, kind of in a whole different world of Californianess, um, you know, and like places like, you know, North Carolina, Atlanta, other cities, mainly in the South, um, all of these in Nashville, for example, these are all cities and market areas that appreciate quickly um, versus if you want to, if you're after cash flow, I have to tell my clients too, if you're expecting a lot of cash flow, this isn't the place for you. Um, and then I redefine cash flow for them. So let me, let me go into that narrative here. So um, let's say if you want to invest like in Detroit or Indianapolis or somewhere like that, um, you're probably going to get pretty good cash flow every month, but your asset, your, your actual house, the appreciation is going to be nil. Um, it's just not going to budge very much value wise. And that's a completely different play from what I'm doing. And what I'm doing here is redefining what cash flow is. And what it means here in Austin is since we're a good appreciation city, when you put your 20, 25% down, whatever as you put down, your cash flow is going to be maybe a couple few hundred bucks, you know, kind of in the neutral territory, at least in the early years. And that's, that's, that's the best it's going to be. That's just what the way our, our city is laid out. But what happens is um, our appreciation is so fantastic that, you know, by my calculations, I've seen, you know, as quickly as four years, maybe um, in ranging up to seven, eight years. During that time frame, your house should appreciate enough where you can do a cash out refinance. Um, and for those of you who don't know what a cash out refinance is, you get a new mortgage on your house um, for that's based on the current market value. And you get to take keep that spread between your new mortgage and your old mortgage. You get to keep that spread uh, and you have to pay taxes on it. You just get the whole amount. Um, so basically you're selling the house to yourself in a way. You're extracting the equity and you get to redeploy it into another asset that performs for you. So. But back to my point is, so every four to seven years, if your house is appreciated enough, you do that cash out refinance, you, you take that equity out, you still have the house, it still gets to keep doing wonderful things for you for years to come, but you take that equity and you, you buy a new house right. um, and you haven't taken anything out of pocket. So your return on investment, I think you really can't calculate it because you didn't, it didn't come out of your savings account. The house, your existing house bought a new house for you or it had a baby. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's just, you know, the magic of investing in Austin. And so I, I tell my clients, when you do that cash out refinance, that's your cash flow. It just shows up in much bigger sums and, and less frequently, but it shows up tax free. Um, and so that's, that's the play I like um, in, in, in Texas. So, you know, so back to your question, I would find, you know, a good realtor. I would find the market you want to invest in. And the third thing is, um, you know, it kind of goes back to the good realtor and the good market what's the right location? Because you can't just buy any house in Austin and expect it to do um, all these magical things for you. You need to be intentional about focusing on what's the right price range, what's the right location, and then what's the right specific house. Mm -hmm. So it kind of layers and gets more and more focused. Hiring an area expert is important. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> like yeah. you. Like me, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle I help you with that. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, um, and then location, 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 and mm -hmm. appreciation. Cause like, like your book says, rich, slow. So you're not, oh, right. it, you know, it's not rich fast. It's not a, a quick fix, but it is something that's going to build your wealth long-term. 
Yeah, and that's kind of like that kind of goes hand in hand with it's the it's the hands off approach too. So you're not thinking about it because a lot of my clients they like have little kids, they have jobs, and they don't have time to be doing anything risky or, or hands on. And so it's right. it's very palatable, it's approachable and attainable. And um, you know, my clients range from people like with high net worth who do really well, and I've got nonprofit employees, I've got city and state employees who do it. It's just if you have a, a little nut of equity in the, the property you already have, or if you have savings, great, use the savings, but um, anybody can get into it, so. Right, and so when you're talking, you, you, were, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, a cash out refi and how that works and what that spread is. Can you give an example of what that would look like um, in numbers so that people can kind of visualize what, what that would be? Um, yeah, so I'll give my, my personal example. And so what happened is, my husband and I gradually um, had just started accumulating properties and we had five rentals and, and the house we live in. So we had six houses um, and we hadn't taken any equity out of any of them. Um, and this was the moment I realized the magic of the cash out refinance um, and realized, oh, if I would have gone about this a little bit um, more intentionally, we probably could be ahead of where we are now. But what happens, we had, we had five properties and I hadn't cashed any equity out. And I, in one, one false swoop, we did um, all five of them one day. And this was about four years ago. It was in late 2016. So going on three and a half, four years ago. And we pulled out $300,000. And I know in California, like that's just like that you'd find that on the sidewalk, but you know, in Texas, that's a it, lot of it money. It's gold here. And, <laughs> and you know, five years ago or four years ago in Texas, I was just like, yeah. But we took all that money and we turned it over into five new rentals. So that's how we, we went from five to 10. Yeah, that's um, amazing. Yeah. Being, being able to, to double, double your portfolio just like that. Yeah, and we didn't touch our savings. And again, all that money was tax-free. Uh, you don't get taxed on funds you pull out when you refinance. Um, you only get taxed when you sell, right? Unless you're doing a 1031. But you save that for another lunch learn with somebody who wants to get nerdy in that way. Oh my God, that you had months. a great line in your book. Um, What's that? You had a great line in your book that we talked about before the lunch and learn that it's always a good time to buy. Yes. Not necessarily a good time to sell, right? Right, right. And yeah, I totally stand by that comment uh, just because when you're ready, get into the markets um, and don't worry about where we are in the cycle. I mean, the only thing I can promise people is that the market is cyclical and it's going to go down at some points. Um, fortunately, with we're officially in a recession, but Austin is like we're still appreciating and days on market are still lower and inventory is still low. And um, but that's we can talk about that in a bit. But yeah, it's always a good time to buy. And this is a long term buy and hold strategy. So even if you're sitting on this property for a long, long time, and you ride out a few cycles and you're going to end up at the end of the day, you're going to end up ahead of where you buy now. Um, I was thinking, even if you, if you bought right now and you think it's the top of the market and our next downturn, I'm thinking, you know, today's high is still going to be higher um, than, or tom tomorrow's low is still going to be um, higher than today's high. So it's just real estate appreciates and it's cyclical while it goes up, but there, there are, you know, peaks and valleys as it, the trajectory goes up over time. It's more like a, than a, <laughs> you don't see yeah. like, does it like dip? You just kind of, yeah. And it goes back up again. So I see what you're saying. We have a lot of um, our clients that are moving out of state and a lot of them are going to Texas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that Texas is pretty much all open now. Are you guys pretty much open completely? I think bars open today. I don't know what, at what percentage, but yeah, um, Texas is, is pretty much open. I mean, people are still being very careful. People are wearing masks and, and all, you know, um, following the, the social distancing rules. So but I think as it is, we weren't hit too hard by the virus. It surely affected us by, absolutely. I mean, my kids, you know, <laughs> got, you know, school got canceled for all of Texas too. Um, but we, I would say relatively, we, we've come out pretty good, um, assuming we're out um, as compared to, to other locations in terms of the severity of the infections around here and just what it's done to, to our economy. We have a pretty resilient economy. It's very diversified. And so, um, We've done pretty well. What's happening with the housing market in Austin? Um, it is, uh, I'm looking over here because my other monitor. Um, so I'm a huge fan of the business journals and I, I subscribe to the Austin Business Journal. And this our article just came out earlier today. It says April home sales dipped slightly, but Austin seems to be rebounding already. 
And that's been my experience too, just in the field and, you know, out on, on the ground doing, doing real estates. Um, our at median price actually went up by more than 3% last month. Um, you know, the number of sales, the volume went down, of course, there, there was, um, there was an effect, you know, it, we are slower than we should be, right? Uh, but our, our days on market actually reduced. Our pendings are way up right now. Our showings are actually, there are more showings right now this week as compared to this week last year, more buyers are out looking at houses. So we just do it with our masks, you know, and, you know, no hugs, which is really hard, um, but uh, we're, we're making it happen. Um, and so our, yeah, our, was it, so yeah, inventory is like sellers who didn't need to sell just took their house in the market. So it's simple supply and demand. There's buyers still wanna come here and sellers who don't need to sell yet have, to have you know, refrained from listing. So it's squeezing our inventory, which is causing prices to go up and uh, inventory to decrease and days of market to go down. So well, um, rates are so low too. That's mm -hmm. definitely yeah. Definitely. But, and buyers, the buyers that are are out there are very well qualified because of the lending regulations. So yeah. I think mm -hmm. um, I think all in all, it's I think the market's pretty steady right now out here too in California. So. Mm -hmm. You are um, thinking of moving to Texas, to the Austin area. Debbie is an amazing realtor, very familiar with the area, um, and things are strong there just as they still are here. So, yeah, yeah that's awesome. And I help people. I, I just don't do investing because that was just kind of a side thing that kind of took up a life of its own. But, you know, I, I help people with like real houses too that they're going to live <laughs> in. So. Have you ever had anyone that you've advised to um, purchase rental properties come back to you and be like, Debbie, what did you do? No, no. no. Oh. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for some horror stories. We created wealth, Debbie. What's going on? <laughs> no, what I'm seeing is so I have a conversation with people a lot because I said everybody's interested and I, I love having the conversation. So it's no problem. Um, I could talk about it all day, just like I could talk about tacos all day. Mm -hmm. um, but um hey you guys we didn't talk about our food i know let me finish this and i'll show you guys what's left in my, <laughs> my lunch because um, it's, it's late here it's almost 2 30 so I, there's no oh, way i could wait yeah. this late to eat oh my gosh um I forgot about the time change yeah but so um i have a conversation a lot and i would say that all the people i talk to about 30 percent of the people actually make something happen um and then uh, of that 30 percent half of them after they wait about a year and they realize it wasn't fatal and they want to do it again. They're like, hey, this is pretty cool. Let's do it again. So um, awesome. yeah, everybody, you know, and the people who don't come back for more, they're like super happy with what they did. So yeah, I haven't gotten any hate mail about That's that. <laughs> so glad to hear that. So, um, so yeah, we, we didn't we didn't talk about our lunches today and it is lunch and learn. So I hope you guys all brought it. So Debbie, why don't you show us what's left of your lunch? Well, it's very crinkly, and I don't know if it's going to show up in my, this isn't really my living room. Um, this, this is just some nacho, some tortilla chips that are left over from lunch from this uh, local chain of Tex-Mex uh, restaurants called Taco Deli, and it's delicious. It came with queso, but my locust family already ate all the queso, so there's just a few chips left over. Um, and then there's something that's magical about Austin um, Tex-Mex cuisine. It's called breakfast tacos. Oh my gosh, they're so good. I know you guys do breakfast burritos out there, but this is different and they're just, just heavenly. So if you guys ever come to Austin, um, anybody reach out and I will have go meet you for breakfast tacos. Maybe I'll even pay for them. We'll see. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, I had, um, I'm, I'm drinking this. It's an, a smoothie. It's called an immunity smoothie. Um, it's made with beets and ginger. So if you don't like earthy, like spicy stuff, you're going to hate this. It's, uh, it's not going to be good, but um, I, I picked it up from a girl I follow on YouTube uh, for pickup limes is what it's called. And so the recipe will be linked below. Uh, it's actually really delicious. There's cherries in it and uh, orange and banana, and it's really hearty. Mm. So I, I'm, I'm loving it. And I can drink it while we're actually talking, which normally you know, if I have sushi, I can't eat while I'm talking to you guys. So I can sneak smoothie. I'm trying to find what my lunch. Hey, Amy, where did I get my recipe from? I forgot. I remember it was a peas, pea pasta or something like that. Pea pasta. It was, it was really good. I already ate it. So I don't have it to show you guys. But Delicious. It was 
Slay Ella. Ella. Ella, that's right. Yeah. Ella. She has some amazing recipes. I cook a lot of her stuff, actually. Hmm. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I really like her, a lot of her recipes. She's got a lot of great chicken recipes. Um, this peas and pasta was super easy to make, which is why I loved it. And Amy ha uh, put the link below. So if you guys want to try it out, it was really good. And I do want to try breakfast tacos. So I might find Ooh. a recipe and try it myself. Try In honor of Taco Deli. Yes. And maybe. Yes. Yes. I was tickled by the name, by the way, Taco Deli. That's so funny. Well, at least I thought, I think it's funny. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just so good. That's all. It just makes yeah. me happy. They had the, the best um, family pack meals during this whole COVID thing. It was like dirt cheap, like just like have. Oh my God, the best, best takeout ever. So yeah. yeah. Hey guys, if you're enjoying uh, this lunch and learn, please give us a thumbs up or preferably a heart, a love. <laughs> <laughs> give us some love so we can bring back more amazing guests like Debbie today. Yep. Oh, thank you. Uh, next week we'll be having... Um, New York Life on. They'll be talking about some mortgage um, protection for you guys. They also do financial planning, life insurance, some really important issues for what's you know going on right now today. Um, and Debbie, thank you so much for coming on with us. We really appreciate it. And guys, check out that book. Like, it's seriously a really great book. It's a fast read. It's super funny. Like, I guarantee you'll be laughing out loud. And there's a lot of really valuable information in there for investors of all, you know, serious investors who've been doing it a long time and new investors also. And for all of our realtors out there, um, check out Debbie's coaching program. Uh, she should. When do you think you'll have that? ready to go Deb. Um, I'm finishing up the recording tomorrow and then I've got to get my web guy working on it but um, they can reach out to me just directly and I can keep people informed so um, okay. whatever contact information you give people for me um, yeah. I'll certainly respond yeah yeah. So Amy I'm sure she put a link it to your uh, Facebook page too so that they can private message you or Oh, and I'm also the only Debbie Treminsky on earth, I think. So <laughs> <laughs> there's that. <laughs> so you need to find you. <laughs> well, then you can have a good email, just Debbie Treminsky at gmail.com instead of Debbie Treminsky 892221 at gmail.com. Yeah, well, it's just long. <laughs> is nine letters. So it's, uh, you know, it's a phone number in itself. <laughs> So, yes. <laughs> thank you everybody for joining us today uh Roxanne and Mary for hopping on we really appreciate it if you're interested in any of the lunches we had today they're below uh check them out as well as uh, check out Debbie at debbietreminski.com where you can order her book or you can also get it on Amazon it's available on Kindle it's a quick easy read and for really anybody who has any even the slightest interest in investing uh, you're going to enjoy the book and it's going to really shine a light on on um, investing and make it less of a mystery it's not just for the rich uh, it can be for you too yeah thank you so much thank, thank you, you all. and join us next week guys we'll have new york life on um and we'll we'll see you guys then yeah follow the red ribbons everybody and we will see you next week Bye. Bye. Bye.